You know what woke means? It means you're a loser. Everything woke turns to shit, okay? Wokeness is a virus more dangerous than any pandemic hands down. This movement in this country about wokeness has got to stop. Drag shows, gender ideology, critical race theory, and all this other woke BS. And that new disease is called woke culture. It's the new secular religion in America, and its belief system centers on the idea that your identity is based on your race, your gender, and your sexual orientation, full stop. When you go woke, you go broke. We fight the woke in the legislature. We fight the woke in the schools. We fight the woke in the corporations. We will never, ever surrender to the woke mob. Florida is where woke goes to die. It's Notes from America. I'm Kai Wright, coming to you from the stage of the world-famous Apollo Theater in Harlem, New York. This is a special broadcast of Notes from America to celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day, produced in partnership with WNYC and the Apollo Theater, and broadcast to public radio stations all across the country. And you know what? Is anybody here in this crowd woke? Well, we're going to talk in this show about what that word really means. It's a funny moment in our political culture, one in which simply being aware, being awake to the world around you, that's a dire threat to some people. But honestly, it's not all that new, and nobody can tell you that better than the person who coined the phrase, stay woke. How do you lead better? better known as Lead Belly, was a pioneering folk musician in the early 20th century. He lived a challenging life. He spent his early years in Louisiana and Texas, mainly sharecropping and singing, and finding his way through some of the most violently racist years in American history. He may have been a violent man himself. He served a couple prison sentences before he began recording songs in the 30s. But his impact on the culture is undeniable. He found and wrote many folk songs that would become part of the American songbook, as it were. And he loved to engage the conversation. He even had a show on WNYC for about a year. In 1938, Leadbelly wrote a song about the Scottsboro Boys, nine black teenage boys falsely accused of sexually assaulting two white women on a freight train in Alabama. The boys spent a collective 100 years in prison as their cases were tried and became the catalyst for the civil, one of the catalysts at least, for the civil rights movement. And Lead Belly, he connected with their story and he wrote this song. Now he's a gravelly mouthed southern man and the words can be hard to make out, but here's a little bit of it. Go to Alabama and you better watch out. I'm going to tell all the colored people living in Harlem Swing, don't you ever go to Alabama, just try to sing. We're, we'll hear a special performance of that whole song in a bit, but first let's learn more about Lead Belly and the context in which he first told black people, stay woke. I'm joined by his great nephew, Alvin Singh. He's the lead archivist. Yeah, let's hear it for Alvin. <laughs> He's the lead ar archivist for Lead Belly's estate, and he's made a documentary about his life. It's called Lead Belly, The Man Who Invented Rock and Roll. Alvin, welcome to Notes from welcome, America. Welcome, welcome. It's an honor to be here. How you doing? So, Lead Belly was your great uncle. Yep. When did you become aware of him and your relation to him? Uh, my first, actually, awareness of him was around the age of 11 or 12, and it was a huge certificate in my grandmother's house. And I asked her, uh, when, did, you know, when, when did granddad go to college? And she said, that's not a college certificate. It's a prison <laughs> pardon. And I said, well, when did granddad go to prison? And then that's when the story is to her, her uncle as well, my great uncle. And that's like three years later, he was on a U.S. postal stamp. Wow. And, but 
Uh, so that's my connection with Lead Belly, okay. yeah. And before he ever started recording songs, as we said, I mean, he was basically an itinerant farmer, yep. um, traveling around, singing, performing in between farming. What was his early life like? Uh, he was born in Shreveport, Louisiana, so it was sharecropping, but he started early as a musical uh, musician. So he would travel throughout Dallas, Texas, and Texarkana area with Blind Lemon Jefferson. Uh, and back then they would do something called hoboing, which would jump on trains and, and play music and go to the next town. Yeah. So he started from that background. And he landed in prison uh, yeah. a couple times for fights that got near, near deadly. Yeah, actually, and remind you, this is Jim Crow America, so this is in the early 30s and 40s of fair trials, mistrials, and all of that took yeah. place. Um, the way my grandmother told the story and I shared in the documentary is this was a time where you know you didn't have a DJ and you didn't have things like that. So him as the kind of disc jockey for the party, you know, there was jealousy that was there, and those fights did break out. So he ended up in uh, Sugarland Prison, which is in Texas, and he wrote a song uh, on the spot for the governor of Texas, and said, "If you, if I had you like you had me, I'll wake up in the morning and set you free." And this was a governor who ran his whole election saying that he would never set pardon on anybody. And sure enough, in 19, uh, I think uh, at 25, he did do the pardon. Sang himself out of prison right. for the first twice, time. Twice, actually, twice, yeah. Twice, twice. But so it, 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 being in prison was an important part of his story, too, because it was there where he found and wrote a lot of the folk songs that would become... Yeah, so it, there was a father and son team, the Lomaxes, John and Alan Lomax, who worked for the Library of Congress, and Smithsonian to a, a lot of these recordings of folk songs uh, in America. So what Lead Belly would do is travel throughout the prisons and start it off of what kind of songs that they were looking for. And so it ended up being 500 some repertoire songs. Wow, 500 yeah. something yeah. songs. Yeah. And he was inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1988, yeah. which means he's one of the first people inducted. Yeah, uh, he was, that was the first class. A lot of famous musicians inspired him. You've inter interviewed some of them. Uh, how would you summarize his musical legacy? Oh, we don't have enough time for that, but... Uh, <laughs> I, I, Give it a shot. Yeah, it, it was... So we did the documentary over a span of 15 years, and I started it with my grandmother's uh, address book. And who were the people on it? Odetta, uh, Harry Belafonte, Pete Seeger, Oscar Brand, you know, these kind of people, or Joan Baez, B.B. King. And they all had you know, just uh, great words to say on how he inspired them from where there was you know, the blues connection or the rock and roll connection, but his music was authenticity, is what I, I would hear right. often a lot. Right. Uh, and you know, for, so, for example, Pete Seeger expressed to me that you know, while him and Woody Guthrie would dress up as a common man with jeans and flannel shirts, Lead Belly showed up at Christmas and children's parties with a tuxedo. That's so right. he took his, you know, his right. performance very serious. That's right. Uh, so what he's less known for is, as I said, coining the phrase stay woke. And that story starts with his 1938 song called Scottsboro Boys. Uh, and as I said, these are nine boys, nine teenage boys, falsely accused of raping two white women in Alabama. What was Lead Belly's relationship to them? Quickly, he met them, right? Yeah, in the song, he actually um, mentions that he met the lawyer and four of the boys. So four of them were released and five of them were convicted and ended up doing time. Yeah. Uh, he met the four of them when right. they came to New York. And that inspired him. And in his recording of the Scottsboro Boys song, he speaks with an interviewer at the end, and this is where he uses the phrase, and for what we believe is the first time, this is an old record, it's hard to make out, but I still want you to hear his voice. So I made this little song about down there, so I, I advise everybody to be a little careful when they go along through that, but stay woke, keep the eyes open. So again, hard to hear, but he says, stay woke, keep your eyes open. That's right. What do you think he meant by it in that time, Alvin? Um, wow, I think it was similar. I used the reference of analogy of like the Green Book. Right, so the Green Book was something that uh, if you were traveling in the South with hotels to stay, which restaurants to go to, which places to go to. So, I, and his reference from what I'm hearing it is a, is a warning. It's kind of a, a warning, and, and he, he does mention Harlem a lot in that song. He does. So he's telling, 
And that to me represented the youth, not so much of New York City, but maybe the youth. Uh, and as we know, so if he said that in 1948, 1955 was the Emmett Till case. Right. And so, and he was a Chicago boy as a 14 year old in similar cases. Uh, and so I, I believe in his perspective, it was a warning and, and it was also for you to stay aware of causes wherever you are, you know, wherever, if you don't have a cause, then you gotta fight for something, you know. Um, Alvin Singh, thanks for introducing us to your great uncle and absolutely. his work.